What's up? The other week I did some maintenance on the lawnmower. I just did a quick oil and filter change and I was hoping to do spark plugs, air filter, and fuel filter as well. However, the parts didn't come in then, but they are here now. My last two videos were shot on the same day. Once again, it is cicada season, so it's about a week and a half after I recorded the last one. You can just hear they are in full force right now. Just take a listen to that. It's, it's quite loud. Anyways, like I said, we'll be changing out the fuel filter, air filter, and the spark plugs as well. So let's get going on that. Now while this work will be done on the same mower as last time, it is a Cub Cadet Pivot Axle RZT50 lawnmower. Looking in the back, it has a Kawasaki FH661V engine, so I'll be doing some work on that today. So for this work today, I have my DeWalt 205 piece mechanics tool set. I have not one, but two Champion spark plugs. You can see the model number on the bottom right here. They are RN14YC. I have my miniature inline fuel filter right here. It's wrapped up inside of the bubble wrap for protection. And then I have my air filter right here. I'll show you how to get to all of these, how to install them. Do that in just a second. Now getting started, I'm going to start with the air filter. In this case right here for this motor, your air filter is going to be right underneath it here. It's secured in by these two little screws, so you just want to get going on those. Starting screwing like you would anything else. Loosen each one. They should be hand tightened. You shouldn't need any tools for this. They just come off pretty easily like that. They'll start free spinning the more that you get up. There you go. That one's loose. Keep going over here. Now this one's loose. Now once they're both loose, you can just grab down here. Whole cover comes off as one piece. Just kind of lifts up like that. And there you go. You can see your old one right there. Now you can see the old one is pretty dirty. It might not need to be replaced, but the part was pretty cheap online, so I figured I'd do it anyways while I'm under here. Pretty simple to remove this as well. Once again, it's just small little screws like this, little wing nut screws. They just do the same thing over here. Just keep doing that so you get them loose. One pops off. Other pops off. Once those are off, you just grab it, and it slides right off like that. Now here's the old filter once again. You can see how dirty and contaminated that is, but it is clean inside, which is still a good thing. You don't want that to be dirty on the inside. And then here's the new filter. You can see how much cleaner it is, how much more rich that blue color is. You're just gonna wanna make sure that there are no contaminants inside before you put it on. And once you verify that there are no contaminants on the inside, you just put this one on the same way that you took the other one off. I cleaned off the little seal around here so that there's nothing down there that'll be it sucked in down there. So you just want to make sure that that is 100% clean. Once it is clean, it is simple as sliding it back on, taking your little wing nut screws, securing them on like they came off before. And then once you have both on, you just kind of want to keep twisting it once again, just like the same way you took it off. Get them on a good bit of tightness. You just want to make sure that no contaminants are going to get sucked in the bottom. There's a little foam seal on the bottom. You can see it right here. You want to make sure that this is secured down, clamped down enough so that nothing is going to get in. I might adjust this a little bit because you can see a little bit of silver right here and nothing on this side, but you want to make sure that it's on as evenly as possible and you want to make sure that these wing nuts are securing it down enough. Now I repositioned it. I just screwed down the two little wing nuts up here a little bit more. You can see that it's got a more even seal down there and it's being pressed down a good bit. That way no contaminants can get sucked in down there and anything that hits it is just going to hit right here and get stuck here and not be able to get into the engine. Other than that, your new filter is secure. You'll be able to put the cap back on that covers it up and makes it look nicer. Now here's the cover. I wiped it out a bit with the paper towel. I didn't necessarily wipe it down with water, but it's a little bit cleaner than it was before. You just want to take the cover, slide it on like so. You'll know that it's aligned because this line will just line up right here and be pretty even. You see I get a bit of play right here. Once you start to be able to thread them on right here, you'll lose that play and it'll get tighter. Once again, here's the play that I was just talking about. You just want to screw it on. You'll know it's on because it'll start spinning evenly. You'll lose that play. And the tighter you get, obviously the harder it is to move it. So, you see there's not much play right here. Still room for air to get in where it needs to. And there you go, that is how you change out the air filter. Now next up I'm going to change out the inline fuel filter. You can see this one right here, pretty clean inside. You can see there's no contaminants inside right now. I'll show you the one that's on it right now for comparison. And here's the one that's on it right now for comparison. It's kind of hard to see, but there's a lot of dirt and contaminants in the bottom of it. So that definitely needs to be changed out. 
I don't know how well you can see it. There's a little bit of gas in there right now, but I'll show you how to do that right now. So I have my camera aimed the best that I can have it right now. There's an arrow on my old one that says flow and it points into the engine. That's the same way that I'm going to be putting on this one. You can tell right now because the cap is at the top, you want the cap facing closer to the engine. So the fuel will go in the bottom side here. So one by one I'm going to remove these little clamps right here and I'm going to put them onto the new one to replace the old one. I'll show you right now. Little pinch clamps right here. Now these little clamps right here are turning out to be much more of a pain than I thought. I apologize if my arm's getting in the way, but I'm doing my best to shoot it right now. It's kind of a hard angle to film on. I was able to slide up the top clamp. I'll pull it off in just a second. Now as you can see, I slid up the top clamp right here. The bottom one right here still has yet to be slid down, so I'm going to work on that right now. And there you go. Top clamp is up here, bottom clamp is down here. Should be able to just slide them off right now and then slide in the new fuel filter. I'll show you that now. So a bit of gas is going to leak out, so be prepared for this. Just gonna kind of twist it, work the old one out of there. Didn't get much spillage right there. Gonna take the new one and I'm just gonna pop it in right there. You can see how that just clicked in right there. Gonna, while I'm down here, take the new clamp, slide her on up. Now just a proper forewarning if you're doing this yourself, these clamps really hurt your fingers if you're pinching them, so a pair of pliers might be a worthwhile investment. I have some in the garage, I'm determined to get this done, I'm not too worried about it. So I'm just going to keep trying to slide it up myself. Actually I take that back, I'm going to go get those pliers now. I've got my pliers, I'm going to take another stab at actually working that back up. So once you have your pliers on there, it slides up and down very easily. You can just let it go at the top, like that, and then it is completely secure on. You can see it won't pull out like that. Now I'm going to get the other side on. Now with the old side of the fuel filter right here, I don't know if I'm going to lose any gas. I didn't last time, I got lucky. should be able to see that, but it just, I'm going to twist it out like I did the other one. And I'm going to twist and pull. Yeah, that one is pretty well in there, but yep, I'm losing gas. I got gas all over my hands right now. And there you go. You see that gas dripping out of the hose right there? There you go. So not too much, but a decent bit. Once again, here's the old fuel filter. You see all that dirt and crap inside of there? Yeah, look at that. That's why I'm replacing it. So here is my new fuel filter again. It is connected to the hose which leads from the tank to the filter and then I'm going to attach the hose that goes from the filter to the actual motor itself. So I'm going to get that on now. Once again that hose is right here in my right hand. I'm just going to want to connect it over. Line runs down here along the back side of the engine. Just kind of slide, wiggle it in. There you go. Clips right in like this. I'm going to take the pliers and I'm going to get the clamp and I'm going to slide it up onto here. And there you go. I don't know if you can see this on the camera right now, but it is completely secured in here right now. The clamp is at the top of the filter right here, and then it's at the bottom of the filter right here. It's on as much as it'll go. I'm gonna try priming the engine a bit and just making sure that it'll start and that fuel will run through without any leaks. So now we are on to the moment of truth. Will it start so far? Now for a quick second it started up and then it almost immediately died out, but that is because there is no fuel in the system right now. So as I was doing that, I was looking down at the filter. You can see that there's, it's kind of hard to see, but if you see the distortion in the light right there, there's a little bit of fuel in there. Every time that it cranks over a little bit, it primes the fuel pump, which is right here, and brings in some more fuel. So after a few cranks, it should get going. I'm not going to go consecutively because I don't want to burn out the starter, but I'll show you what I mean right now. I'll try to position the camera down there. I forgot to hit record, of course, but you can see it's much more saturated fuel right now. You can see all that fuel shaking around in there. Might be able to see a little bit more go into it. Let's find out. Getting close. All 
I'll give it a few more minutes. I'll try that again. Well, that didn't sound right. There we go. It's gonna take a little bit of priming to get it going. Took quite a few tries to get it going, a little bit of cranking, but she's running at full throttle right now. It's running just like it should. So there we go. Fuel filter, done. Last but not least are your spark plugs. Now, like I said, you have two spark plugs. One is on this side of the engine and the other is on the other side of the engine right here. Now with each one, you would just want to pop off the cap. It kind of got to twist it, but it just pulls straight off like that. And that's how I was able to tell what the size was. I looked up RN14YC, which is printed right there. Kind of hard to see, but that's what I looked up. That's how I was able to find that these are the right size. So these are the ones that I'll be replacing them with. Same deal goes for the other side. Just kind of twist and pop it. Just a proper forewarning. If you're running your engine like I just was, it's probably going to be a little hot. So just be prepared for that. Otherwise, for your spark plugs, aside from the new ones to change it with, I have a 13 16 spit right here. It's the long one. It goes onto my half-inch socket. And if you see right now, locks perfectly on to your old spark plugs. Now from here, it's pretty simple. Once you have it locked on, you just kind of break it loose. It'll pop down like that. And then you're just going to keep going at it until eventually you get it out. Position the camera a little bit differently just so you can see. Gonna work at this by hand. There you go, you can see it's loose right there. Gonna try to reposition the camera before I pull that out. You can see, like I said, it is hot because the other one was in use. There you go. Now like I said, the old one is still hot because it was recently out of the engine that was just running. But you can see the tip of this thing was pretty charred. It looks like it wasn't completely spent, but it was on its way out. So it's probably smart that I'm changing these now. I'll get the new one out of the box. Once again, I'll be using Champion spark plugs. Nothing in the box besides the spark plug. And just look how much cleaner this thing is. Like I said, RN14YC. Zoom that in real quick. You can just see. Look at the tip of that one. I'll get it to the old one just to show you a comparison. Yeah, just look at the tip on that old one. Completely black compared to shiny and silver. So let's get the new one in. Now I actually just pulled the other spark plug out of the box. You can see the gap between that one looks a bit more substantial. I'm going to work on trying to get the other one gapped a bit more just to have them more in line. But I'm just going to put this one in for now. I'll show you how to do that. For this, it's just going to be pretty simple like it was the last time. You're just going to want to move that wire out of the way. Feed it in. Make sure that it's actually going into the right place. I have my head over on the side just to make sure that I can see it. There you go. Now it's twisting in easy. I'm going to take my socket wrench, kind of feed it in here, and then just twist it right back on. Now you don't want it too, too tight, but you also don't want it loose because you don't want it rattling out or anything. But once it's tight enough to stay in there, you're good to go. Just going to pop it out, pop the cap back on. You'll hear it click, and it's secure. On the other side, you're going to do pretty much the exact same thing. I got my 13 16th spit once again. I'm going to feed it into here. Find it. There we go. It's on. You can tell because you'll have less play. And then just get going on loosening that. Almost loose. Going to try loosening it by hand. There we go. Same deal as the other one. Once again, charred completely black. Not completely spent, but on its way out. 
So the proper way to gap a spark plug is with a spark tool. I happen to not have a gap tool, so I just did it by eyeballing it. This is the old one that I modeled it off of. I took this one right here, looked at that gap, and used my pliers to bend this one to be about the same. So you can see side to side there, relatively the same gap size. So I'm gonna bank on that being close enough. Once again, that's not the proper way of doing it, but it should work for what I'm trying right now. I'm gonna take this on a test mode once I'm done with everything to make sure that it's all good. Once again, installation is straightforward. You can see the hole right here where it has to go into. I'm gonna take the spark plug, feed it into the hole back there, move this out of the way. Gonna take it and work on it. And there you go, it's threading in pretty easy, so I'll get out my bit right now and secure that in. There you go, it's getting tight right now. So like I said, you want it on tight enough so that it's not going to wiggle out or shimmy its way over or anything. You also don't want it loose. You don't want it loose, you don't want it over tight. And there goes my camera. Anyways, it's pretty tight right now, so I'm just going to slide that off. I'm going to take this. Once again, it clips back on. You're probably not going to be able to hear it. It's a very subtle click, but you'll be able to feel it. There it is, clicked on. So this one over here is clicked on. This one over here, also clipped on. New air filter, new fuel filter. Let's see if she starts. Started her up, ramped up the throttle, and she seems like she's running just like normal, which is a good thing, of course. That's what you want. So I'm going to go take it on a test mow, but before I do that, I'm going to go eat dinner. Each mow of our yard is about 45 minutes to an hour, so it'll be a good test to make sure that everything's running fine. If anything goes wrong, I'll report it, but if all goes well, I hope it does, I'll report that as well. Well, I just finished up the test mow. It seems like it went well. Mower didn't have any issues. Cut fine, drove fine. That's exactly what it sounded like before, so I'll take it as working. So that's going to wrap up this video. Thanks for watching. Hope it helped.